right, so today we're going to be looking at lesson 19.1. We are going to be looking at the right triangle altitude theorem. So we are going to be looking at a special characteristic dealing with right triangles today. They give us this figure, right triangle, MAE, and then they tell you that AN is perpendicular to ME and that angle M is 70 degrees. And they ask us to find some other angle measures. So first off, we want to say angle M is 70 degrees. Since that angle is 70 degrees, and we know that we have a right angle here, this angle MA, MNA is also 90 degrees. So then that allows us to find the measure of angle MAN. If you look, that is a right triangle. And so we have, if you want to draw it a little bigger, 70 and a right angle. And we're looking for this angle up here. We know that the angles in a triangle have to add up to equal 180. So I can say 70 plus 90 plus my angle equals 180. And if you solve that, you should get that that angle is 20 degrees. Then we're looking for the measure of angle EAN. So angle EAN is right here. We know that this is a right angle. And they told us that this small part was 20 degrees. So that means 20 plus another angle is going to equal 90 degrees, meaning that this angle has to be 70 degrees. And then angle E, if you look, we have, again, a right triangle. And so this angle was 70. This is a right angle. And so this angle here is going to be 20 because your three angles have to add up to equal 180. So now it asks us, how do we know that triangle MAN is similar to triangle AEN? So if you look here, triangle MAN and triangle AEN. We know that this is a 70 degree angle and this is a 70 degree angle. And we also know that this is a 20 degree angle and this is a 20 degree angle. So we can use the angle angle similarity postulate because we have two pairs of angles that are congruent. So you can say angle M is congruent to angle EAN when you look at your triangle. Or you could say that angle MAN is congruent to angle AEN. Or you even have a third option that I didn't mention, but you could discuss that angle MNA is congruent to angle ANE because those are both the right angles. So picking two of those would tell you you have congruent or similar um, triangles because your angles are congruent. So it says the large triangle is also similar to the two smaller triangles, and it wants us to complete the similarity statement. So we know that triangle MAN is similar to triangle AEN, and we also know that they are similar to the large triangle. So we need to make sure that we name them appropriately. So you can look at it, the, as, it as the side lengths, or you can look at it as the angles. So angle MAN or it says triangle MAN. So if you look at angle M to start with, this is the 70 degree angle. And so on the big triangle, M is also the 70 degree angle. So we're gonna start with M. Then it goes to A right here. And A on the little bitty green triangle was a 20 degree angle. And on the big triangle, E is 20 degrees, leaving A to go last. And does that order matter? Yes, it does, because we're dealing with a similarity statement, just like a congruent statement. The order makes a difference. So then it talks about the type of segment that AN is in relation to the triangle MAE. So I'm going to erase some of these marks. They're talking about this. What's the term for it? You might think of it as the height, but the term that they are wanting is the altitude. And we talked about the altitude of the triangle back in activity 14. So the altitude is perpendicular 
to a side, and it always has to come from a vertex. And so that's what we have here. It is perpendicular to a side, and it's coming from the vertex A. So now we want to look and see if we can find these three segments. And they say use the Pythagorean theorem or properties of similar triangles. So one way that you can work through this is to draw the three triangles out. And so we are going to use our statements here to draw the three triangles. And I'm going to draw them this direction. I'm going to leave a little more space. You can draw them any way that you want. You just want to make sure that you are consistent with the three. So MAN is the smallest triangle. And so if you look, it's going to look like that because it's kind of like a reflection based on what the picture in the book was. Then I can use MAN here and then AEN goes in the same order. So I know A. E N and I can do the same thing with M E A. So M E A. And then I can fill in the information that they gave me. They told me that A N was 9. So A N is here and it's also there. So both of those are 9. And it told me that N E was 12. So N E is 12 here and that's the only place that I have in E as a side length. So we can use Pythagorean theorem to find this length here. And I'll label it X. Doesn't matter. You pick a variable. So 9 squared plus 12 squared equals X squared. And so when you square, you get 81 plus 144 equals X squared. And then you have 225 equals x squared, and then take the square root. And so that gives you 15. So the length of AE is 15 inches. So I can erase my little x and put a 15. Then if you look, I also have an AE on this triangle. So I know that it is also 15. From there, I am looking for the length of MA. So I have MA here or here. So there are two different ways that you can do this. You're going to be setting up a proportion. I am going to use the small triangle and the middle size triangle. And so I'm going to label this one X now. And I'm going to say 15 over X equals 12 over 9. Because we know we have similar triangles. So 12 X equals 135, and so when you divide, x is 11.25. So MA is 11.25 inches. And so I can fill in well, both of those with 11.25. And then MN is here. So from here, you can either use Pythagorean theorem because you have two sides and you're missing the third one, or you can use ratios again. So I'm going to do ratios because in a couple of days we're going to be talking about Pythagorean theorem a little bit more. Um, so either way would work. So I'm going to say this is again x, x over 9 and 9 over 12. So when I cross multiply 12, x equals 81 and divide to get x is 6.75. So 6.75 inches would go there. And so that would give you your three lengths that you were looking for. So now let's look at the next page. They give us the right triangle altitude theorem. That says that if you have an altitude drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, then the two triangles formed are similar to the original triangle and to each other. So that's what we were basically just looking at. We had an altitude drawn in our right triangle, and it created two smaller right triangles. And all three of those triangles are similar to each other. And that's going to happen every single time. Every time that you have a right triangle and you have an altitude, you are going to have three similar triangles. And so this 
theorem is proven here in your book. And if you want to look in your Google Classroom, I've got the notes and it has how they work through this proof. For time's sake, we are going to skip it today though. So let's look here. Check your understanding. There are three right triangles in the figure below. They want you to draw each with the right angle in the lower left position. So if you look here, there are two options. You can either draw your triangle like this or like that, and it doesn't matter. I chose to do the top, and so I'm going to draw them, and they don't have to be perfectly to scale. You're just trying to get a basic idea of where your letters should go. So I am going to start with the big triangle. So I'm going to tilt my head a little bit to the left. And if you look, mine needs to be reflected to match up with what it is. So I can write C and A and B up here at the top. Then I need to look at this middle size triangle. This one right here. And it actually, if you just turn it a little bit, will match with the one that I drew. So this is D and B and C. And then the smallest triangle right here is also kind of just a little bit of a turn. So C and D and A. And so you don't have to have yours in that same position, just as long as your letters are in the corresponding spots like mine are. So now let's look at some of the practice. In the figure, we have a right triangle and we have an altitude. So that means that we have three triangles in this figure that are all similar to each other. So if angle X is 62 degrees, what is the other angle that's going to measure 62 degrees? So since we have similar triangles, we know this triangle is similar to this triangle from the right triangle altitude theorem. So if this angle X is 62 degrees, the other angle that is going to measure 62 degrees is going to be right here. It's also 62. And so the measure of angle W, Y, Z is 62 degrees. And the reasoning is because your triangles are similar. So I can say triangle X, Y, Z is similar to triangle Y, W, Z. And those two angles are corresponding in those triangles. So now let's look at number nine. Given the figure, we have a right triangle and a perpendicular altitude. And then they tell you angle E is 25. And we're going to come back to the um, numbers in a minute. D, F is 8, and D, E is 17. They want you to write the similarity statement. So they tell you D, E, F. So that's the largest triangle. D, E, F. And so I showed you one way to look at it um, on the first page where you could look at the angles. The other option when you're trying to write these similarity statements is to look at the side lengths. And so if you trace what it says, D, E, F, starting at D, E to F, you're going across the hypotenuse and then the longer leg. So if you want to think of it like that, you could. So if you look at the middle size triangle, this is the hypotenuse and this is the longer leg. So if you trace, you'd go F to E to G. And then if you do the smaller triangle, this is the longer leg and the hypotenuse. So if you trace hypotenuse and longer leg, you'd have D to F to G. So that's another way that you could look at it. It doesn't matter how you want to look. It's whatever works better for you. So now we're going to use the numbers. So they tell us angle E is 25 degrees. So that means, since I have a right triangle, this angle here has to be 65. Since this angle is a 90 degree angle, this one would be 25. And then this one is 65 degrees. And so if you look, angle D is 65. The measure of angle DFG is 25. And then GFE is 65. So that takes care of the angles. Now we need to look at the side lengths. So again, one option is to draw your three triangles. So if you need to pause the video for a second to work through drawing those, go for it. So those are my three. And then I'm gonna label my sides, uh, my angles so that I have my sides. So 
So same idea as what we were doing, looking at where your corresponding parts are. So you can use the similarity statement. It helps a lot when you're looking at your three to draw them out. So I know that DF is eight. So DF is here and here. And I know that DE is 17, and that is only here. So I'm looking for the length of FE, which is right here. So I'm going to label it X, and I can use Pythagorean theorem here. So X squared plus 8 squared equals 17 squared. X squared plus 64 equals 289. And then if you subtract, you get 225 and 15. So FE is 15. And if you look, FE shows up here. So you could fill that in also. Then we're going to look for FG. So FG shows up here and here. And you can pick which one you're looking for. It doesn't matter. Um, depending on which one you use, you would use a different set of proportion or ratios you would use a different proportion but you could do either one so I'm going to pick the right one the little one and the big one and set up a ratio there so I need to know that this is 15 what I just found so I can say 15 over we'll call it y and then 8 over well I don't have uh, the bottom, G, D. So I have to use the 17 and this 8. So 17 over 8. So 15 over Y, 17 over 8. And then if you cross multiply, you have 17Y equals 120. And when you divide, you get 7.1. So FG is 7.1. So hopefully that helps you a little bit with understanding how the right triangle altitude theorem works. We are going to look in the next lesson with how to use the corollaries of this theorem to work through these problems. So it's going to be a different way to work through the same type of problem.